Hello everyone, and welcome back to my Flutter Flow tutorial series. Today, we're going to learn about dynamic dropdowns and how to use them in Flutter Flow. Dropdowns are a great way to give your users a selection of options to choose from, and with dynamic dropdowns, we can take it to the next level by allowing the options to change based on the user's input. In this video, I'll show you step by step how to create a dynamic dropdown in Flutter Flow. We'll start by setting up the dropdown widget, then we'll connect it to our data source and use conditional logic to change the options based on the user's input. By the end of this tutorial, you'll have a fully functional dynamic dropdown that you can use in your own Flutter Flow projects. So, grab your favorite coding beverage, sit back, and let's dive into dynamic dropdowns in Flutter Flow. I have two widgets in here set up, first widget is car brands and second one is car models. But first, we need to open up collections. And then we have to add a new collection. I am going to name this collection car brand. After that is done, click on start from scratch and type output. And for the data type, we are going to pick string. Now we need to add another collection. Let's click here and name this other collection as a car model. In here, we are going to add two things. First one is called output. And for the data type, we are going to put string. Second one is car brand ref. And for this one, we are also going to pick data type string. After that is done, we are going to click manage content. In here, we want to pick car brand. After that, we press add document. Now, we type our wanted car brands, I am going to type here, Audi. Let's add one more car. For the second car, I am going to type here, Ford. Now we press on car models. And then add couple cars in here. In the upper box, we are going to type our car model, and for the second box we type down the car brand that we want it to be linked. Now I'm going to repeat this couple more times. Now when that's done, we can exit this site and go back to our app. First we have to open up Firebase settings and update our Firestore rules. After that is done, we go back to our dropdowns and start to edit them. First, we click on the first dropdown and click on Add Backend Query. For the query type, we are going to pick query collection. For the collection, we are going to pick car brand. For the query type, we pick list of documents. And after that, we click on confirm. Now, we need to open up this selection and click on define options down here. Now from this list, we are going to pick car brand documents. Here, we are going to pick map list items. Now, we click the item in list. And here we select output. For the filter condition, we are going to change that to no further changes. Now let's edit the second drop down. We are going to add back end query, and for the type, we are going to pick query collection. For the collection, we need to choose car model. Let's change this to a list of documents. And after that is done, we need to add filters. 
For here, we need to pick car brand ref. And as a relation, we choose equal to. And from this list, we pick car brand. Same thing in here, we need to go back to edit the widget. And click on define options. Let's choose car model documents from this list. We choose map list items again. And now in here, we choose output. Change the filter to no further changes. Now we are all set up, and we are ready to check out from the test mode, how does our drop downs work. In here, we have a slight problem. All of our car models can be seen before we have made our first selection. But no worries, this can be easily fixed. But overall, our drop down seems to be working well. Before we wrap this up, I am going to show how you can solve the visibility problem. Let's end this test mode and head back to our app. In here, we want to click on our second drop down. And after that, click on conditional visibility. Now we open this up and pick single condition. For the first value, we want to pick our first drop down. And the equal to we want to change to is set and not empty. Now, let's go back to test mode and see how our drop downs look. Now that's better, we can see that our second drop down is invincible until we pick our car brand. Before wrapping this up, I want to say that I do not recommend to use this if you have a lot of options with Firestore database. Reason for this is that this can cause a lot of reads which can become pricey in large volumes. Thanks for watching this tutorial on dynamic dropdowns. By now, you should have a good understanding of how to create interactive dropdown menus that respond to user input. With this technique, you can build more engaging and user-friendly applications that help users find what they're looking for faster. Don't forget to subscribe to our channel for more Flutter Flow tips and tricks, and leave a comment below if you have any questions or feedback. See you in the next video.